Hey YouTube, it's first stage here, hi. Quick video, well, how quick? I think about half an hour. Why? Because I'm taking you through beta three of Dragonbane. Dragonbane, you say, you've just done a video on Dragonbane. I have. And if you want to know about Dragonbane in detail, go back to the previous video. This one is a, a delta between version two and version three of the beta. Yes, that's right. They brought out another beta since I did that video. So I'm gonna look at the changes between one and the other. Um, and look at how they have tweaked the game. For, for Verily and Yay, they are tweaks. So the core game is unchanged, um, but very much we've got some... I, I counted about 34 changes. I could be wrong. In fact, I, will, I will be wrong, so fine. If you found other ones, great for you. But this will give you a good feel for some of the major ones. I say major because they are tweaks. If you want to stick with me and go through these changes, great. I'll do it quickly and hopefully with a sort of a, a light step. Um, and it'll also give you a flavour of, of the way the game is developing. Um, it does show that Free League are both playtesting the game and they are listening. Um, does it have everything that I would like to have seen in the changes? No, it does not. <laughs> but I do like virtually all the changes that have gone in. So I'm going to I'm going to cut this but quickly very basically if you're new to dragon bane it's coming out in august it's free league's new high fantasy game based on magic world brp 1982 40 years of scandinavian uh role play uh development of the game several iterations of of drakarok demona which is what it's going to be called in the swedish dragon bane in the english um, so it's very much a skill-based game, roll d20, roll equal to or less than your skill to succeed, ones are dragons and good, twenties and demons are bad, heroic abilities for characters, characters' hit points are equal to their constitution, therefore damage is big deal, combat is dangerous, um, lots of spells, magic, monsters, monsters do cool things on a d6 and will trash you. Um, good fun game. Good fun game. Play it with the family. They love it. And I'm really looking forward to its release. Without further ado, let's get to the changes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, okay. I'm going to just skip through these as quickly as I can. One of, the, one of the big changes is the number of skills that you start with at a trained level. Uh, version 2 is the top one. Version 3 is the bottom one. Uh, and basically you can see, so 5 plus 1, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 3, depending on your age. It's gone to 6 plus 2, 6 plus 4, 6 plus 6. Um, the first number is the number of trained skills that your profession dictate you have to choose. So that's so the profession that you choose hones your starting trained skills. And then the others are free picks. So you get more skills. For an av average adult, you get 10 trained skills rather than 7, 6 of which... Are defined by your profession. I think, I think that's how it works. So a slight change there, um, but I, I welcome it. More skills, hurrah, more capable uh, to start with. Another big change-ish is they've got rid of motivation, probably, and they put in weakness instead. So a character is not motivated, they are weak, and they will, they will betray their weakness in the game. And if they do that much as their motivation, then they would get an extra advancement check, which we'll see in a minute. Um, they can play against their weakness, very noticeably play against their weakness, in which case they get two checks, but they lose their weakness for, for the next session. So they are using uh, weakness and motivation in a very similar way, but they're focusing on the flaws of the character. And I quite like that again, you know, flawed heroes. We all want flawed heroes, don't we? It's more fun. Probably. I wonder if you could have both motivation and weakness in a... Well, maybe. Uh, house ruling away already. Mementos. Mementos are important. Small things that characters have that they carry around with them because they're important to them. And they have a game significance. These, uh, so you carry one memento, effectively. And if you focus on your, on your memento for a while, you can recover a, a, an extra condition that's been played against you in a rest. I think in a shift rest. Uh, no, I mean a stretch rest. A stretch rest, I think. Um, and they've just changed a couple. So five and six. They've gone from a broadsword and a knife to a bracelet and a wooden figurine. So they've taken the weapons kind of out of the mementos. And I think that's probably a good move. I think that's probably a good move. So it's nice. 
Here's your advancement marks. So the game plays at the end of a session, you get ticks. Any skill that you roll during a session where you get a one or a 20 is ticked. Um, and then if you answer the questions below, these questions five, um, then you can get some more ticks. And essentially the change here is basically saying weakness rather than uh, motivation. They do have weakness down as an optional rule. I suppose so. I mean, is it? Is it really? I, mean, it's, I think it's probably part of the core game, isn't it, really? Um, and it also clarifies that you can't, you can't question tick a skill that's already been demon or dragon ticked. They have to be different skills. All skills have only one tick. So I think they've just clarified that slightly, which is helpful. Boons and Banes. Um, in version two, if you get... Oh, so Boons and Banes are advantage and disadvantage. Um, they do still cancel. So Boons and Banes cancel out. If you're left with multiple Boons or multiple Banes, then in version two, they only counted as one extra die. Whereas in version three, they count as multiple die. So if you've got two boons on your die roll, well, you'll probably roll three dice and pick the lowest because that's good. Low is good in this game. Uh, roll under your skill, remember. Ones are great. Twenties are awful. So retrain your D20 mind. Um, slight change there. I think that apparently I'm told it works a bit more like Shadow of the Demon Lord. Right, apparently. So anyway, it all comes from somewhere. I like the change. It's fine. Um, if you get multiple banes on a roll, you're probably doomed, <laughs> unless you're really good. NPCs and skills. So there's two kinds of adversaries in Dragonbane, NPCs and monsters. They, they function slightly differently. Um, NPCs are more like PCs, in, in effect, uh, and they've just put in a default skill of five if it's not mentioned in the stat block. So that simplifies things. There are other places where monsters, I think, default to 15 for certain things. I think it's evade and so on. Um, there's probably a bit more to be done here in terms of clarifying things. Again, this is just a base rule to get you going. If it's a real hit, if it's a real sort of heroic NPC you're meeting, you might default it to, I don't know, 10 or something. It's kind of up to you as a GM. But they put something in to give you a bit of a hand, which is quite nice. Another notable change is uh, in, in the, the heroic abilities and in the nature of magic. So these are two heroic abilities, uh, version two version above, version three but version below. Uh, Archmage was the original version and you really had to have magic already to be able to take Arch magic, uh, Archmage and get another school of magic. Whereas now anyone can take magic if you get magic school. There's no prior requirement there. So it does mean that characters who are not initially mages as their profession can, by choosing this particular magic school, um, pick magic. Um, and you can learn a new school of magic. Um, so it, it opens magic up to everybody. But having said that, you have to, you know, you've diversified. You haven't picked other things. Getting heroic ability, uh, abilities is, uh, you know, rare and difficult. And so you've made a conscious choice to multi, multitask, as it were, multi-skill um, across into magic as well. And it will take you a while to build that up. So it's still a choice, but it's available to you. Whereas before, magic was seemed to be very much, well, if you're a mage, you're a mage. If you're not, forget magic. A dabbler, perhaps, in magic is now possible. These are the actions. Version 2 behind, version 3 at the front. They're all much the same. Sort of classic series of actions you can do. Remember, you've got one action. It's a one action economy um, in this game. Um, the round rest, bottom right, is the new one. And they've introduced a round rest rather than a shift rest uh, or indeed a stretch rest. Uh, round being about 10 seconds, shift about 15 minutes. Sorry, shift being six hours. And it's the stretch one, I'm always sort of forgetting, which is uh, 15 minutes. So very, very short rest and it's significant because you can take one round and one stretch rest within a shift a shift being six hours you get four shifts in a day and for each of these short uh, round rests you can recover 1d6 willpower points in 10 seconds um, they do give it and taketh away though because now your stretch rest which used to give you 2d6 willpower points back now only give you about 1d6 so they've kind of not given you very much they've just 
change the nature of when you can do it and how quickly. Anyway, it's a change. Um, it's a tweak, but it's a notable one. Um, weapons. Um, some of these things are just wording changes, just to clarifications to help you understand what's going on. Um, you, you've got to draw a weapon to attack with it, and you can't do it as a free action as such. Uh, you can have three at hand, um, but it has to be at hand to be able to use it. Um, so it's just some clarifications just to help you out. Grip as well. They've changed the grip. So large weapons, two-handed, reduces the strength requirement by three uh, of a one-handed weapon. Uh, if you've got two hands, it becomes it re it's reduced by three, and they've just taken that away. No, you don't get that. <laughs> and they've clarified it, including shield. Um, so again, clarifications more than anything really very major there. Shoves. So if you smash somebody with a weapon, if you're very, very strong, then you can shove them back. And it was based on strength, comparing with your opponent's strength uh, in version two, top left. Version three, bottom right, um, it's about your damage bonus. Um, so it's, it's more about um, whether your damage bonus is equal to or better than your opponent, in which case you can do the shove. So again, some slight changes in the way that that works. Um, and they also um, include, uh, well, well, we'll see. But effectively, that's it for the shove. Parrying. Um, these, this is this is sort of wording clarification. Uh, um, it, it's 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 larger word wording clarification. Very little else. Uh, um, when you when you parry doesn't change. Um, you cannot draw a weapon to parry because free actions can only be undertaken on your turn. It's a clarification. How parry functions has not changed. Shields, uh, you know, relatively sort of notable change. Shields in version two of the beta. If you parry with a shield, you get it with a boom. You roll with advantage. You don't anymore. Shields do have other advantages. They're quite robust. Um, but they don't have the automatic boom, and I prefer that. Special attacks. Um, in addition, some special attacks require opposed rolls. Um, they've just noted a default skill level of five on an opposed roll. Again, it's a default, similar to what we had before. Maybe you might up it, but at least they've cut, they put it in. And it's to help clarify things. Um, less head scratching, maybe. Um, multiple conditions, so every attribute can gain a condition. Uh, a condition is generally gained when you want to push a roll, as in you fail a roll and you want to have another go, <laughs> then you get a condition on the attribute that governs that skill. Um, here it's kind of, what it was saying was once you've got all your, all your conditions ticked and you can't condition yourself anymore, then um, it costs you a d6 willpower in version 2. Well, in version three, it says if you're out of willpower, it starts to cost you hit points, matey. <laughs> so it's just some more clarifications. And if you get down to that stage, you really are struggling. I haven't played it enough. Is that what happens? Do you, do you get conditions on everything? Oof, you are well, you are worn away. With the healing and resting, they've just introduced that round rest. And as you can see in the stretch rest, what was 2d6 willpower points back is only 1d6 now. Giveth and taketh away the mighty gods of free league. Falling, even falling damage has had a little bit of a tweak. So it's about how far you drop and how many d6 are applied to you in bludgeoning damage on your way down. It was like every meter after three in version two, it's half the distance in three. I wonder if they pushed player characters over cliffs with a clipboard. Let's have a look. Oh dear, no, no, that's, that's quite a lot of d6. Should we, should, we, should we change that? Yeah, I don't know. Let's push another one over and see. <laughs> oh, well. Combat maps. Yes, there's much twittering about. Well, all right, all right. The Swedish metric, very good. Two metres per square. Wait a minute. All my maps are five five feet squares. It's about one and a half metres. So they put a little piece in there to, to sort of explain themselves and just say, no, nah, I don't worry about it. <laughs> Whatever. Swimming and drowning. By the way, 
a clarification. If you're in chain mail or plate, you ain't swimming. All right, thanks for telling us that. Got to know these things. Schools of magic. Yep, so learning schools of magic. Again, this is just word changes to reflect the fact that you've got uh, magic school now rather than archmage or incorrectly multi-mage as described in version two above there. Multi-mage I don't think ever existed. Or if it did, it was in a previous draft, I think. Anyway, they've just clarified. They're tidying up the text around this change of allowing other people to pick magic, which is fine. Some of the spells have been changed as well. And just, just, just slightly, again, tweaks. We, we don't have, as I recall, I may be wrong, we don't have any more magic. We don't have certainly a significant amount more magic. It's mostly just the same. But they have changed the wording, which probably comes down to some playtesting. Um, here, um, with version three, they have put levels on the spell. So levels being how many willpower points you pour into the spell to increase it. And, it, and they tell you how much how much willpower you can suck out of people or, or, or transfer back into people, if you wish. Um, and they've also clarified that if, if, the person, if the target of a transfer of willpower doesn't really want to be transferred, hey, get off my willpower, then it's a bane to the role rather than it being an opposed role. So they've changed the nature of the way that that happens and it's a bane rather than, than an opposed role. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I really don't know. Somebody, somebody, some bright spark thought that was a good idea. That's fine. A couple of spells. Left is two, right is three. Ch both charge and permanence have changes. Large charge is where you um, charge up an item like a battery with willpower points, which then people can use because it's, it's a valuable resource. You can spend it on heroic abilities, not just not just spells. Um, it's uh, five per power level in two. It's ten per power level in three. So you can really have these enormous batteries, um, which we, of course, we need now, don't we? we, need, we uh, everything's battery powered. Um, so that's quite a big change. Um, permanence has also had a change. Permanence effectively makes a magic permanent. So it changes into a permanent magic item. And what they've done with this and I think Resurrection, which we'll come to, is that it costs a permanent willpower ability attribute point to the caster. So it's a very significant drop. I mean, willpower is significant and important for a caster. So doing this is a significant change. I don't think I'll apply that at my table. And it's really about what you want to do with your game world and the nature of magic. It's a dial and they've dialed it a particular way. And I'm sure plenty of you will like it. Great, do it. <laughs> it's fine. Banish is quite nice. I quite like Banish. Banish is this 10 metre sphere. Ah, oh, undead and demons, thou shalt not pass. You shall not touch me. Well, now they will, but, it, but they'll take damage on the way in. So it's a, a different way of kind of um, um, using the spell. You get 2d8 damage on a being um, as it tries to get to you. Or indeed, if you up the power level there's an extra d8 per level um, and it can't be parried or dodged quite a lot of the changes in the spells are clarifying when you can parry or dodge kind of like a saving throw i suppose in old school money uh, same with lightning flash here um it, they, they clarify that um, um it can be dodged and parried where it, it's not clarified in before and if you cast this underground um and it's lightning magic um, I think it was um, a reduction in power level. That's right, in version two. But you instead, the willpower point, uh, cost is doubled, which I probably prefer. So again, minor clarifications, but worth noting. Lightning bolt's the same. Lightning bolt's the same. Same same deal with lightning bolt, which is the rank two version. The slightly more powerful version of that flash. Um, same deal. And... Uh, uh, it's there in a couple of more spells, I think, where they've changed it. Purge. Purge. I like purge. You exercise a demon or undead, inflicting damage upon them. Um, and armour and natural damage, uh, armour and uh, natural armour uh, have no effect. Um, cannot be dodged or parried, except now you do extra damage. It's 2d10 rather than 2d8. Hurrah! Stuff, stuff it to the demons, is what I say. Stuff it to the demons. Resurrection, as I say, really nice. Um, two two changes here. One is is they've made it a permanent willpower cost. 
in, in your attribute to those that would cast resurrection, even though it's a rank it's a rank three spell actually. Um yeah, interesting. Permanence is a rank five, as I, as I recall. Um, so it takes something to get to this spell, but they will cost you a, a willpower point, which really makes you think about. And I don't think, and I could be wrong, I'm, please write below. I'm sure I've got it wrong, but I, I can't see where you can uh, raise attributes once you start play. Or indeed at all, actually. Is there a training for attributes? Is there? Maybe. But anyway, it's significant. And again, I probably would not apply that, that this at my table. I might make it something where it's a drain for a, for a couple of sessions, and then it comes back. That's how I might use it. So it's an inconvenience rather than a permanent loss. Again, your table will vary, and and all all, all more and more power to it. The, the other change for this is is that someone who's resurrected will lose one d three to their charisma attribute. Uh, in version two, in version three, they'll lose one d three to all their charisma based skills. So that you'll lose skill levels. But your, your charisma attribute uh, is untouched. Uh, you've got to work yourself back. Uh, Thunderbolt, very similar. Uh, indoors, the power level is reduced by one. Willpower point cost is doubled. So they seem to have made that as a as a standard thing. Um, and uh, they've clarified that the spell can be dodged or parried. So again, slight changes. Levitate yourself or another person. Um, that's fine, yeah, but it, it does clarify here, clarify here. If you try to levitate someone who does not want to be levitated, um, then it's a bane to the role. Um, so you get a bane to the role. Um, I was looking to see if it was opposed before. It just doesn't say. So they've clarified that. Uh, mental strike. Um, it clarifies the spell can be dodged or parried. Teleport. Um, um, they've changed slightly when you can teleport uh, yourself or another creature. Um, it's a little, a, little, a little bit more difficult to do it. Um, so they've just again, it's a, a fairly minor change in the wording. I think that's it for spell changes. So not many, but worthy of note, I think. Here we are on the sort of gear section and costs. I'm delighted to say that Free League have, have recognised that teachers need to be paid more, because uh, they do, don't they? They are overpaid and overworked. Hopefully our government will take note. So, um, five gold rather than three. Um, Okie doke, that's fine by me. And snares, fairly simple item. It used to cost five silver. Now five copper. Well, I trust that I trust the Swedes in terms of when it comes to hunting and outdoors skills. I think they know what they're doing. I certainly don't. Well done, Free League. And I think finally, I'll be proven wrong when there's, when there's another one afterwards. Um, common animals. Um, again, we know that NPCs have a base attribute of, uh, I'm sorry, base skill of five. Well, they've added awareness skills to all the common animals. So your cats will have an awareness of 12, for example, rather than five. Seems about right to me. And we've looped round. I think we've looped round. So I think, I think we are kind of there. Let me just transition back to me. Okay, those I think are the major changes between version two and version three of the beta, the February beta. Um, will we get another one? Will we get a version four? I kind of think we might. We'll certainly get another version of the adventure book, which will produce uh, us with some more adventures. And they're, they're great. They're really good fun adventures as well. I'm playing those with the family and we're having a good lot of good fun with those. So we'll get that. that that'll get a drop. Will we get another drop, a beta four of Dragonbane? Don't know. Maybe. Does it have everything now that I want? Not quite, actually. Um, I don't think the, for me, I don't think the skills are quite right. Um, and I've seen the sort of commentary out there in the forums and everyone's got a different view, as you might expect. Some people want the very svelte, tight skill list that was in the quick start. A really small number of skills. Um, those perhaps who are used to, you know, other versions of Drakaroch Demona um, or indeed possibly BRP, are looking for or happy to have a much larger skill list. Uh, either way you look at it, I'm probably sort of that sort of grey puddle in the middle between the fire and ice. You know, um, sort of okay, but maybe a bit less. Maybe rationalise them a little. 
I kind of feel one might be missing. Uh, sp no spoilers here, but I just kind of feel it's not quite right for me. Um, anything else? Not much. The core game is great. It plays really well. And I'm certainly looking forward to it, even as it is now. But I, I, I do wonder if we might get, we might get, you know, kind of like another uh, beta. Let's look forward to that if it comes. But let's keep playing the game because it's great fun. And Free League are very much open to uh, more feedback. So if you just type in Free League Forum uh, in any browser, it will take you to their forums. And they've got some sticky sort of beta 3 now feedback. So feedback, please, on the current beta. Uh, and we'll see where we go. But great stuff. I think I'm probably going to leave it there. I hope that was OK for you. Um, Dragonbane, the most anticipated RPG of 2023. By me. <laughs> but it is anticipated. And I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, good changes on the whole. Maybe some more to come. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon. Cheers. <laughs>